So I'm uh, deciding to put together this video to show people who have a gas dryer that's not functioning. Pretty much the components of a gas dryer, what usually goes bad, how to possibly access it. So this this dryer here, uh, your first step would be is to lift the the lid here. Sometimes you get lucky and there's there's an, an access panel. You'll see like it's it's got a section here that you can pop off. And what you'll find there are clips like these here. Uh, let's just see in a second. So um, I'm about to just, this has already popped off. You basically just put a screwdriver through here, pop it up, and then slide, slide it out like that. Then you can remove this top piece. And what you'll see is that basically it was held in, slid into these clips here, and these are the main clips that were, were holding it uh, together here that you have to pop out. So if it hasn't been taken apart, sometimes it could be a little bit of a pain. You just have to figure out where these clips are and what's holding the top on. So the next step into access the, uh, the internal components that usually require replacement is to basically take this whole face off. And what you'll see is you'll see there's another clip down there, but there's a screw holding it up there. So I'm going to have to take those two screw, the, the screw on one side, the screw on this side, those two screws out, and then the front face will come off. What you see here is the, uh, this is the internal drum that spins. So you can see it's spinning. I already disconnected this, uh, this belt, but this is basically the belt that sits around here. And that's what spins this drum. And that belt is obviously connected to a motor that's in the back. So on this particular dryer, the, uh, the electric motor went bad, which, you know, it doesn't normally happen, but this one has quite a bit of mileage on it. I mean, you can see all the paint on the inside. It's been, uh, I don't know what, this was a, a dryer that I had with a tenon wine, and they really put this through the ringer. So this dryer I'm taking apart just to reclaim some parts they're going to use for some future repairs, but um, I figured I'd make a video to show you what normally goes bad and how to access it. So I went ahead and took those two screws out, and as you can see, the front is popping off here. You just have to disconnect the, um, the door switch here, and you just pull two wires off. So... This, this is the internal drum. Now that drum pretty much rode on, the, on this lip right here. And there's like some sort of felt or material that it based, that can wear out over time that you might have to replace. Uh, I think we've already done this one once before. And as you can see, that's the blower right there. And the blower basically sucks from this direction here which pulls air through here and that's where the lint screen is so air is being pulled in from the opposite side through the, the lint screen down through here and you can see all of the this is why the dryers need to be cleaned because that's quite a bit of stuff that's stuck in there why people say that you know, these things can cause fires because I've actually seen it with this one. So I tilted it over so you can get a better look at it. These, this is basically the entire mechanics of where the heat comes out of, basically. And you can see all the lint that just gets trapped on here too. This is how, you know, certain fires can get started because this lint is, is, is quite... You know, come on, it's another little trick sometimes, you know, if you have a, a stove at home or whatever, you know, some people save this, all the lint from their dryer, you know, as a fire starter, you know, and they'll put it in a little piece of cardboard and it helps start their fires on their, on their wood burning stoves. So these two are the solenoids that usually go bad. Do you see the gas valve solenoids? This is what allows or tells the gas valve to open and ignite the flame. 
So and down there further, you'll see the igniter. That's the element that glows in order to light the gas that uh, comes out of the tube once the solenoids open up. This here is a sensor, it's probably the moisture sensor when you have a unit that you know has some sort of you know optimal dry or more dry, you know, that's that's probably the sensor that's sending you know revert the air that's coming back into this blower and and to the exhaust to see how much moisture content in it. So basically how it works it starts off here. Flame is ignited. At that point there is there is a draft pulling this heat down down that hole there down that hole comes in through here heats up all the clothes as they're rotating as the clothes are rotating goes through the lint screen catches all the lint and then comes back out through here the blower is sucking at that point and out the exhaust so the, the heat's being drawn by this blower from the lint screen so it's, it's and so it's being drawn from from this section here into the drum and then out as exhaust. It's a very simple design, really. I mean, you, have, you don't have many components. You have, in the back, I'll, I'll show you a little bit later, the electric motor that spins the drum. This is the blow motor that provides airflow. And this is your heating element. Uh, and there's only a couple of components on here, really. A gas valve, and I've never seen really seen go bad. The solenoids always go bad, and the igniter which also has tendency to go bad sometimes. So if you have a dryer that spins, blows air, but does not heat up, nine times out of 10, it's, it's one of these solenoids. They're very inexpensive. You can find them. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, possibly put a link in the description. I've used solenoids from a, an older 20 year unit uh, in a newer unit and they're very compatible. So. Um, I'm going to take these apart so you can get a better look at them and how they come apart and then uh, show you them in a second. So these clips come off pretty easy. Just give them a little wiggle on that pop off. Just a little wiggle. There's really no clip to push down. One's a three pin, the other's a two pin. You can't confuse them. Put these off to the side and you have two Phillips screws, one here, one here. And that basically holds this bracket here that holds these two um, solenoids in place. I've gone ahead and taken those two screws out. And you can see that this, this bracket just comes off here. And these solenoids just slide off the shafts. For these gas valves. So I went ahead and pulled the igniter out. Now this igniter has a clip on it, uh, like a spring clip. And that spring clip, if you look, I'll point to it for you. If you look right over here, you'll see that wrapped around here and clipped into there. And then there's another one on the bottom where it needs to go. And these are pretty fragile, so you really shouldn't drop them like that. Uh, they, this is, um, you can't really tell if they're bad. Sometimes they have a hairline crack. It's a similar setup to your your oven or your stove at home uh, where these igniters go bad very, very often. So um, this one I know wasn't the issue with this machine, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this one should I need this in the past, in the, in the, in the future, I mean. And uh, it's just got a clip like this that you just have to wiggle and pull off. And then you could save this component as well or change it if you need to. If you change the solenoids and you find that that's, that's not working, then this would be your next item to change if uh, you're not getting any flame on your, on your dryer. Fulfill some curiosity you had about what was in a dryer. And uh, if it did, please like subscribe comment love to hear your comments your questions or even your facts that you might know because I, I definitely don't know everything so if anyone knows certain components and wants to add in please feel free to comment 
Now this is the back of the unit and this is the main motor. This motor spins the drum and the blower at the same time. It's like a dual shaft and the um, it, it's pretty much seized and locked up. So this is this is the problem with this particular unit. This would be the pulley for the belt, which had, you know, at this point fallen off. That little belt I showed you earlier. So it goes on there with a spring and around this this sprocket right there. And uh, there's really not much to these gas dryers. Just in, And they've been like, you know, however fancy they are, these are pretty much all of the same components in the gas dryer and how they function. So I hope uh, this information helped you guys um, possibly figure out what's wrong with your dryer or just... So that's the motor. Unfortunately, the belt is off already. I'm not going to put it back on. But this here, let me get some light. That switch there, which is closed right now because there's no belt on it. Should the belt break, that switch will close and interrupt uh, that signal with those two white wires and, and shut the unit down. And that's to prevent, you know, hot air being forced in the same location on a piece of clothing in the dryer and prevent the fire. You know, so the belt breaks and the drum's not spinning. The, uh, let's just say that switch wasn't there. You know, the blower would still move, the hot air would still come in, but it would all be concentrated in one spot in the dryer on, on one particular piece of clothing or whatever and cause a potential fire hazard. So safety switch right there. Last pretty much uh, electrical component uh, inside the internals other than the control panel on top. All right, until the next one, see you later.